What's up, everyone? Eldor Ifeco here, here with a very important announcement. The Estetheon Insignia is officially live, and this is the first official investment opportunity in Animus Regnum ever. So, all the previous uh, collections we've released aren't technically investments, just so you guys all know. For anyone who's watching this that's a collector already and things like that, they aren't legally considered investments, right? An investment is a promise of a return, right? Um, we're, we're promising that we're going to actually get you a profit in the future based off of our company's results. Now, that's what requires us to file our assets under a security and all of that stuff, right? Now, with that being said, we can't go ahead and do that, you know what I mean? You know, with... Uh, most of the assets that we were selling previously because they're just in-game assets we're not going to consider them securities because they're not they're they're assets they're products technically in the legal side of things and how the law sees everything now with that being said um we need to go ahead and um basically uh just really look at the fact here that this is the first time i felt like we had the ability to do this um, I've thought about this before. By cre I've, I've thought of creating a refshare collection before, but the main thing that stopped me from doing that was having the legal representation to make sure that we were able to file with the SEC and all that good stuff appropriately. And gratefully, with our advisor Christina at um, Continuum Network, she has the connections and everything we need lined up. So that way, when we get when we get to that point where we have to do all those things, it's all ready to go. Now. This is something that, uh, you know, I know for you guys, you've probably been looking forward for something like this and hoping that I would do something like this, some of you. I didn't really entertain it before, again, like I said, because I'm not a big fan of, like, en entertaining the system. Uh, <laughs> so uh, with that being said, uh, you know, now that I feel that, like, again, I have the team that I need behind me to make sure that we have the kind of network we need to take, make sure everything is secure, and we go through all the regulations that we're supposed to and no one tries to fuck us over when I'm making this game. Um, it's going to be really different. So the, let's get it. Let's get a little bit deeper into what an Estetheon is and what the value of being an Estetheon is. So the Estetheon is a title. The Estetheon is a group of beings, are a group of beings who are responsible for the building of... Astellos Illuminara. Sorry for my pause. <laughs> so I'm still remembering even my own lore. <laughs> so Astellos Illum Illuminara is something that uh, it's the first city in Animus Regnum ever. It's the genesis point of Animus Regnum, right? So from that point, we're going to build the game outward, right? So from the very, very beginning of the closed beta, there will be Astellos Illuminara in its infancy and the first people to play the closed beta will be the Estetheon period because they're direct investors into the company and they deserve the first fucking peek at everything going on like these these this is the first chance that I'm giving my community this opportunity to be an investor legally an investor into what we're building so um, with that being said you know don't take this opportunity lightly it's a very, very big fucking opportunity. Um, I will be making a video later tomorrow going over the pitch deck and explaining the value of all this to you guys and then rolling over all of that. Uh, and then um, we'll also be looking into how we start to like how we start to plan on actually creating the very beginning of Animus Regnum, the genesis of Animus Regnum together. So with the Estetheons, I'm going to be sharing that information with you more so than anyone else because there's a lot of information that I, tr I really don't want to put out there as much publicly purely because of the fact that, you know, I want to keep certain aspects of our IP kind of secure until we're the first one to truly do it. I don't care if we have copycats. All I care about is being the first to do what I know we are the first to do. So it's not the end of the world all the time because at the end of the day, as long as you put it out there and you can prove that you've done something first, you can you can argue that you've done it first and have the facts to prove it. So with that being said, there's a lot going on that we can um, build with and work with. And um, uh, I just want to like take my time to uh, focus on uh, getting more of this uh, 
community together because honestly uh that's the main thing that's going to be required behind this project is having a solid community who be that believes in the vision of everything that we're doing so with being an estetheon and getting yourself in as an investor of the company what do you get out of that right what's the, what's the fucking point of putting money into this project especially after two years of us doing this and not getting anywhere to some people that's probably your attitude and then for some of us we understand that a game like this is going to take a lot longer so they understand why these things take long take, take so long especially if you've been paying attention to seeing how my journey's been going it hasn't been the greatest ride in the world and it's been a very very bumpy uh, journey dealing with uh, marketing and everything out here in San Diego but the reason why I'm very confident now about my direction of things is purely because of the fact that I'm leaving the country if I if I wasn't leaving the country and I had to stay here in America and keep building this game which I really don't it was just a choice at this point honestly um, being here in America just cost me too much money and trying to hire developers who work in my field costs too much money because there's a very small percentage of us but, um, that understand what I'm talking about. But in Japan, there's an abundance of developers who understand these things, who work with this technology. It's more common out there. And it's also a genre of anime out there for the kind of game we're building. So um, again, I've spoken about this before multiple times in the Discord and publicly. There's many reasons why I'm going to Japan, bringing the game out there because I feel like it, it is just going to be more sustainable for me. The main thing that slowed me down is not having a place to stay and consistently work on the game, even by myself, which by myself alone, I'm capable of doing a lot. And if any of you have seen my work or have been paying attention to any of the things I've done for this project, you'll know that I've made some serious fucking moves. And I do not, and, and especially with the little capital that I've had together, while other projects have had millions and been complete rug pulls, I have still gone nowhere. I have not rugged this project. I have not given up on this project because it is very, very clearly my fucking dream. So the fact that anyone would doubt that, that's not my problem anymore. All I'm here to do is focus on the fact that we can work together to make this happen. If we don't work together to make this happen, then it's not going to happen. I can't make it happen without the right team. And that's another reason why I feel like if I go to the right atmospheres, and there's a story about this, by you, your value is not necessarily measured by the people you think they like. People's val people will measure your value based off of the kind of people they are. You know what I mean? That story about the kid who took a rock and went over to um, different places that his father sent him just to sell the rock. And then multiple people tr like offered him different prices depending on where he was and where he brought the rock and who knew what it, the rock was. So it's, it's all about understanding the atmosphere you're in. And I think that's the main thing for me right now that I'm focusing on is that I'm not in the right atmosphere for the development of a game of this caliber. Uh, I need to be around people who think like I do and work like I do. And I this is a very anime-esque gaming, deep, deep on the deep end of gaming type of thing. And again, as much as I give them praise all the time for it, Japan's the only people, there are the only people I can think of who are really as good as I need anyone to be when it comes down to this. So with that being said, let's take a step back. I want to go into the Estetheon and what the Estetheons are offering. Um, the Estetheon, that comes with multiple perks. One, you immediately get access to our token uh, token uh, lock Discord. You can't be in our Discord unless you're a token holder. I stopped allowing people into my Discord a while ago. And, uh, you know, we just don't allow people in our Discord purely for the fact that it's a stronger community when you have the people in there who actually care about the project and not just a bunch of people who want to see what's going on and figure out if this is cool. We're not here for that. If you don't get it, that's cool. If you do get it, beautiful. We're glad to have you here and, and hope you can continue to build with us in ways that you know the world can only dream of. So with that being said, you get access to the Discord. You get the ability to create a godlike character that is in the status of a god. It's it's not as powerful as the ancients, which name true name isn't even known. But you know uh, what's going on with my camera. So which true name isn't even known. Um, but the uh, Luminari, uh, they are a very rare species of beings that strictly come from that planet. Uh, uh, damn. How am I forgetting my planets and my shit? 
Seraphel, my bad. <laughs> it's the planet Seraphel and the nation of Luminara. So the nation of Illuminara is basically where they come from. It's the first, again, the genesis point of Animus Regnum. It is the first planet. It is the first star system. It is the first galaxy. It is the first everything in that game. So it starts first with the planet. It's going to start initially from the planet, and from the planet we're going to go into the star system, and from the star system, but even smaller, we're going to start before the planet, the city, and then from the city out to the nation, and out from the nation to the planet. You get what I'm saying? So that's how we're going to work on building the game, just to make sure that we can progressively expand the mechanics of the game and know that we're appropriately scaling all of these things. Um, it might happen very quickly. It might happen slowly. But um, my focus is perfecting the quality and detail to this game because much like other companies like Bethesda and all these other big name uh, AAA companies, our goal with this company is to create something that truly appeals on all levels. And uh, I don't want to, you know, cut corners for any reason. You know what I mean? But uh, this is the reason why at the same time, unlike all these other AAA companies who do not build these games publicly, we will be building this game publicly with the community so that way you can see it with us as you watch the game go from its skeleton to a baby from a baby all the way up to its full mature dominant greatest game in the fucking world self <laughs> so you know and you will be able to say as a stethion that you helped us make that together now on top of that beyond the glory that comes with being an stethion because that title in itself is going to carry a lot of weight in the game later you're getting 15 percent of equity and and the real estate, 15% in gold, and 15% in the silver transactions that happen within our game. And if you haven't heard already and you didn't read, read the script before, for those of you who haven't caught up with this, that's all of our revenue from this transaction fees we've gathered in the game, 15% of that from each of those. So it's like 45% altogether across all three assets. And... Um, we're talking some pretty big numbers when you look at the aspects of um, an MMORPG and uh, gaming um, to like on a blockchain, which hasn't really been done yet. So we again, we'd still be the first game in the world to create an MMORPG that integrates the blockchain in this way in a AAA title as well, where you know it's not just like designed in a way, unfortunately, where they have this Ponzi scheme pyramid kind of pattern going on. Uh, I will make another video this week, if not tomorrow, because I have a lot of things I'd like to go over via video explaining um, what these different things are. And these won't be vlogs. These will be more of like descriptive videos that can be gone back to um, so you can re like refer your friends to them or refer anyone to them so that way you can learn about the project on a basic level, uh, see the pitch deck presented by me and things like that. These are vlogs. These vlogs are meant for the community specifically, but who knows? I also consider the fact that somebody just might randomly jump in here and decide, I'm just going to start from here. So welcome to you all. <laughs> Either way, um, we need to really focus on the fact that with the Estetheon, with that 45% of equity we give you, that's also why we have to file as a security now for this collection, because we're promising a piece of the company's equity. Now, these, these this equity is in smart contracts. It works with all the transactions that are tied to, like I said, real estate, gold, and silver. Now, with those three assets, you get, like I said, a total of 45% from the across the three and you can see that in our pitch deck explaining how the numbers look and what all the potential outcomes are right now on top of that <coughs> you, on top of that equity share you get you get a condominium that we're going to be building at the core the very core of Estelos Illuminara we're building it at the very center is going to be the, it's going to be the genesis point of Animus Regnum. It's going to be the most powerful energy center in the entire game. I'll give you a hint to some of the things that I plan to make that building do in game. Just being in it instantaneously heals you of any illness, damage, whatever the fuck it is that you have. You cannot die in that building. It's not possible. Conflict in this city is not a thing. <laughs> like. It's going to be the most secure location in the game. And we're talking about a game where just being in the wrong space at the wrong time can cost you a lot. You're going to love the value of security. Trust me. So this area in the game, this place where we're, where we're building, 
this is going to be the most secure location in the cosmos because all the other aspects of the game we start to build out we're going to create as spaces for you to explore the unknown that we don't even have access to we haven't even explored as the Eldora we're just going to create it so that way it can be explored now on top of that you know getting the condominium <laughs> in uh, Estellas Illuminara there's also going to be um, the citizenship that you get naturally with being in the city so you get your character you get your title you get the equity you get your condo and then you get your citizenship and citizenship is important it's very important in the game if you're not a citizen of certain locations that are highly established you're going to be told to leave plain and simple or you're going to have to go through their visa passport system you know whatever it is that they have going on you know what I mean so it's same way we have systems like that in our lives we're gonna have systems like that in this game now a lot of you would be saying that this is really outlandish and very hard to think that we can make all of these different things in one game right and even for those of you who've been here for so long you know I don't play around with my ambition but at the end of the day technology has gotten to a point where this is no longer some fucking pipe dream I'm actually looking at the technology that can build all this stuff and I know it's possible and if we allocate the funds the right way and stop hoarding money into our own personal pockets and try to focus on putting them into the games that we're building then it's possible for all of this to happen now um, it's really it's really you know, for me, again, like I said, my focus will be and always will be to create one of the uh, most powerful MMORPGs that's ever touched this planet. But again, this is why I created the Estefion Insignia, because this is to symbolize the team of people that I need to help me build this. You know what I mean? This is not just a financial position you gain in the game or where you just throw in some money. Which is also why I've made the uh, opportunity for you, so many people to get involved and for it to be so affordable because I wanted it to be for the people. $200,000 in Japan is going to do amazing for me. A good portion of that is going to be going to filing for the SEC and everything like that to make sure that we're covering our regulations and things in that realm. But once we're in Japan, 100, $150 plus thousand dollars after taking care of legal fees and everything in that realm. Um, that's more than enough to cover my living expenses and hiring multiple developers to work with me for the next six months or year. No problem, depending on how many developers I hire. And I personally don't see me hiring more than, um, uh, I don't see me hiring more than, uh, what's it called? Uh, I don't see me hiring more than probably like four to five developers, depending on the situation and how much it costs for me to do so. Um, I have focused in the beginning, like I said, I know some people could look at this like, oh, you're taking advantage of the fact that they don't have such high wages. Well, no, that's not the thing that I'm doing here. I'm taking I'm taking advantage of the fact that I don't have to pay such fucking high living wages personally because it's with rent and all this shit that keeps draining a lot of the money out of my pocket that I could be putting towards this game and doing things like marketing and all this different shit that I know how to do that would, you know, give me the same kind of income I'm making because I'm making money remotely. I'm not making money fucking locally. So what's the point of even being here and spending all this money anymore, right? Either way. Now, <laughs> with that being said, you know, once I'm in Japan, these artists are getting the same contract that I'm offering the developers out here. Like I said, any generalist or artist who's capable of being like an art director or a lead developer of a video game and things in that realm, those are the people I'm mainly looking for, and they're going to be claiming equity in the smart contracts that they create with us that contain their art. And they're going to have a large share of that equity. So if they create like a weapon, like a um, uh, a long sword, uh, or a set of like weapons, a set of uh, vehicles, things in that realm. I've talked about this before, right? Now, the one thing that I will be doing is making sure that um, these developers get at least 50% of the assets they develop for our game. All the way up to 70% de depending on the assets. You know what I mean? So if they develop something that requires most of their work and talent to create, we're going to give them the full 70%. You know what I mean? But if if this is something that we're also helping them create, like myself, because I'm not incompetent and I know how to deal with Unreal Engine and all that stuff, you know what I mean? So I'm capable of doing some things myself. But, um, you know, so if we're working together, of course, we're going to take a... a you know they're going to take a smaller percentage but they'll always get around like 50 percent right 
this is possible because that 50% that goes to the artists, they get royalties. That 70%, they get they get the royalties as well after that in all the secondary sales that happen through their assets in the game, like the weapons and all this. So that's going to change the deal for a lot of this. You know what I mean? Like that's going to take this to a whole new level where artists can actually become extremely wealthy because of the success of, you know, entertainment projects like video games and anime and all these different things where the 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 success of that project can return them royalties for every time it's played or watched or streamed or licensed out every time the company makes a profit off of that so does the artist you know what i mean and the artist could make the more, larger majority of that and here's the reason why when you as a company or a studio or a gaming studio or a game and just in general it doesn't matter this is good for, i run i want entrepreneurs and for anyone in my community who works from a business perspective to think about this when when you have multiple artists who are capable of providing such value to your company you want to take care of them number one because they'll always take care of you and on top of that um uh it's also something that compounds right now, this is something that's going to compound a lot as you create more and more assets in the game. The more assets there are across the board, the more all these different assets compound throughout the game, right? So they get the 50% and they get the 70% and the company, we get 30 to 50. But as you start to go through every last asset in the game, you know what I'm saying? And this is going to apply to same similar things in anime and creating merchandise and things like that. That's digital and like, you know, fidgetal as some would call it, where it's still tied to the blockchain and you create limited edition assets. Kind of like a, like think of like uh, statues that were tied to NFTs as, um, as, a, as a, what's it called? A certificate of authenticity and things like that. Um, so I've, you know, there, there's just a there's a lot to be pa unpackaged here you know what i mean with this opportunity and uh probably one of my longest vlogs that i've ever done and it's purely because of the fact that i've never been able to do something like this before and i truly believe that like i don't just simply believe i know for a fact i know for a fact that this will change the gaming world forever for fucking ever and it's never going to be the same we're never going to live in a world again that's going to be worried about financial situations or anything like that we're going to be creating a level of abundance that's never been experienced before purely because of the fact that we started to create entire virtual ecosystems that out surpass the trading volume of our current real world markets that is the best fucking way for me to summarize this that we will be creating a system that literally competes with the multi-trillion dollar market that trades every day trillions of dollars. We will be able to create something better than that in the virtual environment that is more efficient and not only more efficient, but it is more entertaining and teaches people how to create value and what value truly is from a fucking video game. You guys got to understand what we're talking about here with Animus Regnum. Beyond it just being a dope-ass game, this is going to change lives globally. And if you haven't caught on to that yet, I don't know where the fuck you've been. So, either way, you know, this is not the uh, typical project. This is not the typical scene. This is not the typical experience. I'm not doing this because I want... I want um, to gain the attention of everyone. I'm not doing this because I want everyone to, to accept me and give me a pat on the back. I'm doing this because I know it is what I want to spend the rest of my life doing because I will love it. And it is going to be a dream that I can share with everyone that I love that will actually be beneficial to the world. Because you know, as much as everyone else in my community, I don't like everyone. I hate a lot of people. And I'm sad to tell the world this, but a lot of you piss me off. <laughs> and I'm sure you understand where I'm coming from, all of you. <laughs> so, um, with that being said, you know, I just still want to create something that provides for the world. That pisses me off so much. Because it's only through experience that we're able to change. And it's through this game that I can create something that's allowing you to change as people. Now, with the Aesthetheons, you helped me create that change. You helped me create that experience. For $25 fucking dollars, 0 0.15 ETH, you can be an investor into this game that's capable of creating numbers that have never been seen before. Right? Now, 
understand this. <laughs> like, really understand this. Like, if, if you've ever played RuneScape, RuneScape still today has single items. I've, I've, you can look it up yourself right now. Go to Google, type in RuneScape, go to the grand fucking exchange and look up, right? Look up the items in RuneScape for the most valuable trades, the highest v amount of gold put in a trade, period, right? Now, you're going to notice that single items get up to a trillion dollars in a fucking day in trade value. A trillion gold, right? Not a trillion American dollars, but a trillion gold in RuneScape. Which is still a lot of real money, too, when you calculate how much gold is being bought for, right? Regardless, we're not looking at the amount that gold is worth. We're looking at the transactional value here. Transactional value is what people aren't paying attention to when it comes down to blockchain gaming. Blockchain gaming is going to become as valuable as it is, is because the transaction value tr creates a utility that crypto has not seen since the beginning of its fucking birth. Like since the genesis of crypto, there's never been this level of utility. Imagine being able to use Bitcoin for every last transaction in fucking RuneScape. Do you people like, like if you've ever played RuneScape, if you've ever played a video game, then this is for you. If you've never played a video game, go play one of these games real quick so you can understand what I'm talking about. Like an MMORPG where you have a marketplace and an exchange system and play around in that marketplace and look at the transaction volume of everything. It's absolutely mind blowing. It's insane. Just RuneScape alone, which is over 20 years old. RuneScape is fucking 20 years old, people. 20 years old. And we're talking about something that's capable of, like, if being put on a system that's ca that can actually work. And that's another thing. There's a lot of problems with people creating a blockchain game because they don't understand... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. They don't understand the tech technology enough to create a structure that works for a game. And in order to do that, I, I actually know exactly what you need to do. It's kind of crazy. And I'll go a bit, like I said, into it with the Estetheon specifically. If you become an Estetheon, I will talk to you about this system directly in our Discord. And there will be a room only the Estetheons can join. And I'm thinking about making it the Elder Sanctum. The Elder Sanctum is also only able to be accessed by the Ancients and the Sovereigns, the Ardalith. So that's something that I will tell my community directly. If you want to learn about the system that I'm creating that the entire gaming fucking world is going to require for most of its games or just any system in that realm, that requires the game to have a network that isn't a Ponzi scheme, but actually a recycling network that self-sustains, is self-sufficient and self-sustainable. Because an, el uh, an economic structure in the crypto community that's self-sustainable has been the vision that's also decentralized has been the vision of crypto for the, from the beginning. The whole point is to take control out of the banks in the bank's hands and put the control of money back into the people's hands so that way we can control the value that moves around in our our fucking lives because the the money is it belongs the value belongs to us as the people if you haven't heard about nixon and all that shit this is what makes crypto valuable all this bullshit that's going on in the financial world that doesn't make that, that just is outdated technology, outdated systems in the banking system and all that shit. It's just completely fucking up our ability to provide for ourselves as people and create a sustainability for our future generations and all this different shit, right? So with that being said, you're going to have to learn how to create entire systems for yourselves that are self-sustainable in order to escape this bullshit. Otherwise, we don't get to just live comfortable lives you're going to keep living under a society where it's it's a dollar is going to uh, not never appreciate because it can infinitely be printed number one you can't appreciate something that's infinitely available and just burts the fuck out faster than in like a fucking a, a damn minigun attached to a goddamn fucking flight carrier like it's just it's not it's not possible dude like you can't even keep up with something like that and then when you deal with something like 
crypto and you can clearly see even still today that the token has been appreciating at a steady rate ever since its, incep its inception and no matter how many times the market tries to collapse its value it still fucking holds it's not going anywhere why because the technology makes sense to people who actually have fucking brain cells they're not going to just sit here and think oh you know they, I'm just crypto is just a fucking dump and pump no dumping pumps pump and dumps only happen Purely because of stupidity, one, you, f you fucking people follow shit that you shouldn't be following. You follow projects that don't make any fucking sense at all. At all. And they, they literally clearly look like scams. They have no actual vision. They have no legal representation that's clearly presented. They're not even fucking doxxed. And you people just jump into the hype because they were capable of putting enough money into the hype. You think they have to be important. It doesn't even fucking matter if they're important. You could be the most famous person in the world. And all of a sudden, he could just say, fuck it. I want to fuck the people today. And you guys would fall for that shit. That's how fucking dumb most of you are. I'm, I'm fucking sorry to say it. Like, it's just sad. Like, you're retarded. And... Unfortunately, too many people want to actually like I I've been gullible like that. Don't get me wrong. I've got rugged. You know what I mean? I've looked at projects. I'm like, oh, it's clearly a derivative. You know what I mean? It's a chance that it could go south. But, you know, they seem like really good people because that's what it's about. Usually in the NFT space is the fucking community. In the crypto space is about the community for the most part when it comes down to the blockchain and uh what's it called nft side of things where most of the nft projects are based on you know community structures and things in that realm and access to very exclusive environments and you know events and things and all that don't get me wrong that's not a bad business model it's just it's only as good as the community you curate and the community curators are usually shit which is the reason why things go to shit makes sense right so you can't expect anything out of any of that if you guys don't pay attention to this. You guys want to actually succeed. You have to do your fucking research. This is why I've stayed out of everything else that is distracting me, especially now from making this game. Because I know it's going to change the space and I can't allow myself to get distracted by anyone else in the space who's claiming they're going to change it. Then fucking do it. That's what I have to do. I have to prove this shit to myself because I know I can do it. So I'm going to fucking do it. And I'm just going to quit just sitting here wasting my time hoping anyone else in the space gets it. You just do it, build it, they will come, as one would say, right? Which is the reason why I'm saying we take a, a, a small amount of money in comparison to what a lot of these motherfucking NFT projects have raised. $200,000 isn't shit. $200,000 to Japan and watch me work. Watch me work. I will directly stream the whole experience. And you guys know me. I'm very active on my Discord. For those of you who have seen me in my Discord, you know I don't go anywhere. I've never gone anywhere, and I will always be present. And I've been more active lately because I completely have disconnected myself from anything or anyone who's going to distract me from making this fucking game. So, this uh, vlog definitely went very deep compared to what I'm used to doing. Um, I do want you guys to understand that everything that I'm doing here means a lot to me. And there isn't a single fucking thing I want to do to make this game a reality. You know what I mean? And it's, it's just, it's just, it's just something that, you know, no matter how many people think they understand the technology, no matter how many people think they understand what's going on, there's only so much I've spoken about. I can promise you that even after everything I've told you, there's going to be things that you will have never believed could be fucking done in gaming history until I've done it. And that's, that's my fucking word. I promise you that. Like, it's never been done before, and it will never be done until I do it. And I know that. So, with that being said, I'm not trying to sound cocky or like some asshole who's stuck up and thinks like I've, I, I've shown people in my community and I've, like I said, get into the Discord and we'll talk privately for those of you who've actually earned your place in my circle. Um, I will show you what I'm talking about. But I'm like I said, I can't make all of that sauce public because it's just, you know, too many thieves out there as it is. And even me sharing it in the small circle that I do, it's already too dangerous to just give up the sauce. 
You know what I mean? Too much, too much IP, my friend. Too much IP. So, other than that, I feel like I should wrap up here. Remember, the Estetheon Insignia is only 0 0.015 ETH. It's like $25, $29 in ETH, basically, right now. That's nothing. And you can get 89 of them per wallet. So, for those of you out there who are very serious about getting involved into some big things, do that. Uh, you can do that. But, um, you know, I wanted to make this a possibility for all the little people, too, who believe in gaming and believe in the value of gaming. And a single NFT can change your fucking life. A single NFT. Yes. And this is something that I feel is going to provide proof for the full level of utility that can exist in blockchain gaming and just crypto in general this is going to become one of the strongest use cases for crypto technology is gaming on this level and it's going to start to create a new standard for what games will become in the future so with that being said guys uh i really can't wait to see what happens at the end of all of this honestly you know it's just been I've been doing this for the past two and a half, almost three years now, working on this project. Um, I've gotten pretty damn far. I've learned so much. It's not like I haven't gotten anywhere. I've made a ton of connections, and I've gotten to a point where I know what's the most important. And, you know, it is just a matter of, like, making sure I surround myself with the right people who are just, a, just as serious about this as I am. And we can't be distracted by that. So I'll be creating a video tomorrow going over the um, the pitch deck. That'll be a lot more formal than my vlogs. Um, but still, me just being myself because, you know, we're making a Web3 video game and Web3 is not traditional Web2. That shit is lame. Um, and uh, other than that, you know, I'll be running through the vision a little bit more in detail. Every day this week, I'm just going to be pushing this. And uh, marketing is the biggest focus right now. So um, uh, I will probably be creating some award systems for referrals like I've done before. Um, and we also will be doing some tournaments as our Discord grows again, uh, like our Mugen tournaments, for those of you who remember that and things in that realm. I think I've also found ways to make it so that way we can have people actually play as their characters, which would be dope. So we'll figure this out. I'll see you guys later. It's been a long-ass vlog. Gonna shut it down now. Peace.